It's showtime. Let's go. What's going on, y'all? This is Shonen Showdown's top five list, the first episode of the top five list. And today we're going to be talking about the top five best leaders in shonen anime but before i get right into that i want to talk about some honorable mentions right now we have suna from hitman reborn complete beast we all know how powerful he is but i can't put him in my top five strictly because reborn had to drag him kicking and screaming next i have yamamoto in my in my honorable mention guys do not kill me but Yamamoto, even though we know his spiritual pressure is enough to make anybody cower, he is just not there yet, strictly because Sosuke Aizen made a plan with Wonderwise to seal his Ryujin Jaka. So I cannot put him in my top five. Next, we have Ren Cohen from Magi. Complete beast. You know, one of the top leaders of the Ko Empire, but I could not put him in my top five because obviously the organization was intervening with his plans next i have sinbad sinbad is also a beast but he couldn't stop ren cohen from doing what he wanted to do and and basically getting aladdin which is the magi that sinbad wanted right next i have chairman netero what what is there left to really say about netero we know how powerful he is but i could not put him in my top five guys i just couldn't do it you know why. Because there's questions on whether or not he was really able to get the job done against Marowim or if he just got lucky, right? Um, and last but not least, Meliodas. Meliodas was right next to my top five. Probably would put him at number six, but I couldn't get him in there because he doesn't really care about anybody else in this series besides Elizabeth. I mean, he wouldn't really care if Bond died tomorrow right now if it was all for Elizabeth. I'm sorry, that's just that's just the truth in the pudding. We know how powerful he is, and he also is a complete beast. But let's get right into my top five. At number five, I have none other than Captain Levi. Captain Levi from Attack on Titan. We know how we know how skilled he is, right? He's an Ackerman. He's super, super powerful. He's very elite, um, and he's a great leader. But at the same time, when it, when it talks about a leader, he gets the job done against the Beast Titan, the same Beast Titan that Erwin couldn't deal with, which is why he shot, he sent everyone to their death. Yes, that same Titan is who Le Levi took down, which is why he sits in my top five. At number four, I am putting Straw Hat Monkey D. Luffy. Of course I'm putting him in my top five. Are you kidding me? Captain of the Straw Hats. And oh yeah, let's just not forget the effect that he has on surrounding characters within One Piece. I mean, the man has alliances within the Revolutionary Army. The man has alliances within the worst generation in Law and Sabo. And also, the man is a complete powerhouse in the worst generation probably the best in the worst generation and his, his only con to me is that sometimes he puts his crewmates in uh you know compromising positions but even when he does do that his crewmates trust in him and luffy normally gets the job done um at number three i am putting jiraiya of course I'm putting Jiraiya in here. You're talking about Naruto becoming Hokage. You're talking about Minato becoming Hokage. You're talking about Kakashi becoming Hokage. And you can even look at people like Nagato who are crazy powerful. All of these characters have been inspired, have been touched, have been, you know, blessed in some way by Jiraiya's teachings, by his grace, by what he was able to bring to the story of Naruto as the great Toe Sage. So of course I'm putting Jiraiya at number three. At number two, you guys guessed it, I have Olivier Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Why? Why, guys? Why do I have Olivier in here? Oh, yeah, maybe it's just because she's a leader of Fort Briggs. Maybe it's just because she has the strongest, you know, army under her command. And at the same time, not only was she able to take down Sloth with her own strategy, but she was able to find out that the Elric brothers were in need of help and got them help. And at the same time... Olivier has her troops defending the main gate during the coup d'etat because they can operate without her assistance. That's how powerful her rule is. So of course I'm putting Olivier in my top five and not number one. <sighs> Guys, you know who it is. You know who it is. I have Lelouch v. Britannia, aka Zero, at number one of one of the best leaders I have ever, ever seen in any anime, period. Why? Because you got to talk about 
the, the cards are already stacked against him, right? You already have the king of, uh, you know, V. Britannia. You already have, you know, Charlie doing his thing. You already have V2. You have all these cards stacked against you. And Lelouch found a way to make sure that the 11s have a shot. The Japanese have a shot against Britannia. Not only did he recruit Colin, who is one of the best fighters in the series, if not the best, next to Suzaku, you have C2 backing you up, protecting you, making sure you have, op uh, you know, opportunities to go save Nunnally, making sure you have opportunities to get things done, and Zero, not only has he developed the Black Knights, he made sure that his only enemy that was Suzaku ended up playing the role as Zero post his quote-unquote death. Listen, Zero is none other than an elite leader, and I have him at number one. You guys like, comment, share, and subscribe, and let me know your top five. I'm out.